today's video is going to be about branding, font selection, and using fonts in stream elements. Fonts are incredibly important. Many streamers don't think about fonts. They overlook the small details that can have a large impact on how you're perceived by new viewers and your current community. If your alerts look the same as the last streamer they saw, it may be enough for them to just think you're not unique enough or even subconsciously affect their decision to continue to watch your stream. And they could possibly leave feeling like you're not really any different than their favorite streamer. Fonts also play a big role in communication with your viewers. If you are using the default settings, your fonts may not be clearly visible, readable, or eye-catching. Branding is one of the most important steps streamers of all sizes skip, and this can hurt your workflow and creativity. Branding is essentially colors and fonts, and knowing which fonts and colors you're going to use lets you focus on making fun effects and alerts for your streams. It keeps you from exploring and playing with things that you should have already been decided. Instead of seeing if this color works and seeing if you like that font, and then playing and you get lost in just decisions that should already be decided. My suggestion is I have a video on branding, a workshop I did a few years ago. I'll link that. I'm going to be doing some new videos on branding in the future. I want everybody to figure out their branding, their colors and their fonts for their stream so they can just get to making cool stuff. It's all these small changes that add up. So let's look at a branding board together so that we can see kind of how all this can come together and what you might want to aim for for your own branding. And then we'll talk about messing with and playing with fonts properly so that you get the best, cleanest look out of stream elements. So here we have a branding board I made with one of my clients, Snazzy Bastard. This is what it will look like when all of your branding comes together. You want to find a good color theme that will match with your personality and your stream community and kind of the message that you want to send to your viewers you want to find fonts that work together and so these are the fonts we chose for his branding and we've laid them out here in such a way that you could see how they might be executed it's very simple we've also f picked these colors down here a uh, black and white are always available in a color theme for branding so they don't necessarily need to be included in your final selection. So once you choose your five, six, sometimes more primary colors that you want to use in your branding and you've chosen your fonts that you want to use in your branding. Now I suggest everyone use Google fonts. Find good Google fonts and good colors to use because all of that stuff is going to be available in stream elements all the fonts are available to you to use commercially. You can use them in merch. You can use them across your websites very easily. You can use them in stream elements. So this is an example of what it looks like when your branding board comes together. You pick your fonts and you pick your colors and you make sure that they look good together. So now let's look at stream elements together. And I'm going to show you how to play with your fonts and get some settings. Right here I've got a small font layer in this overlay. This is just a wi text widget. Uh, this, the settings we're going to go over in this are going to be true for your alerts. They're going to be true for anything that has text in here. These settings are all going to be available. So we're just going to play with this one layer. And I'm going to show you the general settings that you want to play with and tweak. Once you've got your text or your alerts or whatever, uh, the temptation is to grab the edge to try to make it bigger. As you can see, this is not actually making the text bigger. This is just making the frame the text can sit in bigger. So if I make this smaller, then it moves down into a new line and I can cut it off if it's too small. So if you want to actually make the text bigger, you want to kind of aim for how big the text is going to be. I would zoom out so you get a good idea of what the layer might look like. You want to click on the layer go into if you go into settings that's where you're going to find general settings for editing the text that's going to be there position and size allow you to manually type in adjustments for this stuff change the opacity you can rotate and the last thing is the text settings now this is the stuff we're going to focus on here so let's say we want to use snazzy's branding for here so metal mania 
is his main font, right? So now you can see the font is very hard to read. It's too small. So we want to bump the font size up. I would say overshoot 120. Now you can see we can't see it. It's too big, right? So I'm going to make this box. I'm just going to make it as wide as the screen. And 120 is too big. So we want to go with maybe 50. That's a little better. It's a little too hard to read because it's bold. So we're going to unbold it. And I'm going to center it. It doesn't have to be centered. You can play with these settings all you want to try and see what works best. Underline, uppercase, all of this stuff. Font weight. Um, this is not going to affect all fonts. Uh, it will bolden things and get bigger. You can try playing with this to see basically how it affects the font. Some fonts are going to have less of an impact. So for text stroke, this is a kind of hit and miss setting. Uh, you can start with one text stroke, which is going to be very big, and we're going to add a black text stroke. And you can see that kind of makes it pop, pop out a lot better. And if we make the font size bigger, say 75, the text stroke is even finer because it's, if we go down to 21 on here, you can see the stroke kind of is too thick. So the stroke, if you're going to use a text stroke, it's got to be matched up well with your font size. So if I go to 99, the text stroke becomes very small. If I want it to be as big as it was before, i got to go to 3. And you can also do decimals. 0 0.1 is almost no text stroke. 1, 1, 1, 2. And you can hold the arrow keys to kind of increase it and get it like fine-tuned. I like 0 0.9. 0 0.9 is pretty good. And you can drop this down. So this will help kind of give your text a way to stand out on um, a background that is bright. So if you're playing a game that has brighter colors, it can be hard to read this kind of text, um, your, your alerts on a background. But even better than a stroke, if I get rid of the stroke, is the text shadow. And what I like to do is do RGB alpha. So I'm going to set it to 100 transparency, so it's fully transparent, so it's just going to be black. But right now it's sitting directly behind the text. You can barely see it. So th this first pixel count is how many pixels to the left or the right. If you do negative pixels, it'll move left. If you do positive, it will move right. So we want to say maybe three pixels to the right and then three pixels down. You can see how it's starting to stand out more. If I do 10, you can see how it moves down a lot. Now that's extreme, that's too much. I wouldn't move it this much, it's too extreme. So let's do six, that's still too much. I like three. My settings for mostly everything is three, three, three. I like three, three, three. Now we've got this moved down a lot. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take this and we wanna put a decimal place in here. Basically anything, one is on, 101 are the same here. So if we do 0 0.21, you can see how transparent it becomes. Then you want to use 0 0.60, 0 0.90. You can make it a little bit transparent if you use a decimal place. And I always suggest adding a spread. The, the last number here gives you the spread of the pixels. It kind of blurs it, right? So 12 is also extreme. It's better to have... I think three looks good. It gives it a nice soft look. If I just put this on one, you can see it's very sharp. Three is a nice little spread. And 21 is too extreme here. So let's just go three. So now we've got it popping a little bit. Now if you combine this with the text stroke, it can work. So you want to be careful if you accidentally click turn off the text stroke, uh, the text shadow, your settings disappear. If I turn this off and turn it back on, the settings disappear. Adding a text stroke while the shadow is there can be somewhat helpful, but this is really dependent on the font you choose. If you choose another font, for instance, in my branding, I like to use monotone, and the text stroke is too extreme in most cases, especially if you got a color. I have yellows in my in my uh, my branding, so if I make this a, like a yellow color, and I use a heavy stroke you can see it's just makes the text black so you want to make sure that your text stroke is matching up well with what you've got set up for your shadow and if you, the stroke and the shadow are clashing a little bit too much maybe move the shadow down a little bit more be a little bit more extreme with its offset 
and also make sure it's readable. So obviously with Monoton here, it is it's much more difficult to read the text. These settings are not working well for this font. I may have to go to all uppercase or not use this font for this kind of setting, this situation, because it's just not readable. Readability, legibility of the font is actually very important. This is going to stand out too much, especially if it's something that's just sitting on the stream the whole entire time. And depending on the kind of font that you choose, your font size is going to greatly differ. So you may want to play with all of that. All, you're going to have to play with these settings as much as possible in, in order to get it honed in right. Letter spacing is also something that can help with readability. If you increase it, it can make it a little bit more legible. If you give your words a little bit more space, just play with these. That makes it way more readable now that I've spread out the words, separated them a bit more. And just play with these settings. Now, one of the things I want to say is text scrolling in Stream Elements has been hit or miss for me. If I choose up right now, nothing happens. It's still scrolling left. If I choose down, it's still scrolling left. Turn it off, turn it back on. Sometimes you have to really play with these settings. You know, it's scrolling up, but it's not scrolling up from the bottom of the frame. It's scrolling up from like its home position where it was originally written. Text scrolling is hit or miss in stream elements. And one of the things that's a problem is when you go to preview it in your OBS, it may load first like this and then disappear and then start scrolling, which is very frustrating. Um, I've met, I've messaged stream elements about this, but I haven't gotten a good response back yet. So we'll see what they say. So text, if you want something to scroll, maybe better to use the scrolling option in OBS to scroll the layer. That said, the last thing you want to try to focus on here when messing with any of your settings is look at it in OBS. Test it in OBS. Test it against the game background. Test it against your camera. Make sure it looks good. And even possibly test it on a test channel on Twitch. Look at the VOD. Make sure the text is rendering right. Sometimes very small text, even though it's a static element, or maybe it's not. Maybe it's your alerts. You have to test. You want to see while the alert comes up, can I read it? Is my encoder falling apart and becoming garbage when the alert is going off? Do I need to make the font bigger? Test, test, test. But the good news is once you get it dialed in, you've got a really nice clean stream and settings. You don't have to keep messing with this stuff. And stream elements will let you duplicate. If it's an alert, you set up your main alert and you create variations, you can copy the settings from your main alert over to the variations. Um, text information, GIFs, sound effects, all the things that you would want to change in your variations, your text is set. You've got your colors, you've got your fonts, you know it works, you know it's good. And that is where the creativity of being a streamer can actually accelerate with this process because you've got your alerts done. You, you know what you want them to look like. You know what the colors are. You know what the fonts are. You have a branding board. You have your branding situated. Now you can just duplicate the alert, change the GIF, change the sound effect, change the level, the trigger level, and you're good. You get to tweak and play with the more important things, which is what can I do when this happens on my stream? What do I want to have happen if someone tips this amount of money? You're not stuck playing with colors. Oh, maybe this color. Oh, maybe that color. Oh, maybe this font. Maybe, oh, maybe that, maybe that font. That's where you're going to get caught up in just playing. And you're going to spend more time messing with your settings and fonts and colors than streaming and letting people enjoy your stream. I want you guys to be able to go out there and just stream. So, if you found this video helpful, leave a comment, like, subscribe, and if you're interested in our community, if you're a Twitch affiliate and you're looking for people to network with, discuss this kind of stuff with, and just generally hang out with other streamers, go to infinitequality.live, and I will see you guys in the next one.